So there's no mistaking that the iPad is probably one of the best multitaskers and also one of the best portable devices you can have, but it's not without its issues. And in this video, we're gonna actually go over five of the most common iPad issues you may have. And we're also gonna go over how to fix those issues. So stay tuned. Let the download begin. So if you're new here and you wanna learn how to use and troubleshoot your devices, plus some other cool tech stuff, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button and that bell for notification so you don't miss a thing. So we're gonna jump right into it, but before we do, I just wanna let you know that if any of the troubleshooting steps that we mentioned in this video doesn't address the problem that you're currently having, then your next best step is always to reach out to Apple. I'm gonna make sure to have the Apple support information in the description of this video. So if these troubleshooting steps don't fix your issue, your next step is to check out those links and numbers and give Apple a call. So one of the first issues we're gonna take a look at is severe battery drain of any kind. If your iPad just isn't sustaining the battery long enough, or if you notice your battery life has been cut short, here are a couple things you can actually check to make sure that your iPad is running at optimal battery strength. So interestingly enough, the first thing you wanna do is if your iPad hasn't been restarted in a while, some people just don't restart their iPads at all. Your best bet is to just restart the iPad. And restarting the iPad is actually fairly simple. You're gonna press the volume button down on the side and you're also going to press your power button you're going to hold those two together and you'll get a screen that displays like this showing that you can power off the ipad and then you would just slide to power it off and power it back on doing that power cycle can actually help with any kind of power drain because it completely just discharges anything that's currently running on your ipad that may be draining your battery and also a quick reboot of any electronic device ends up fixing a lot of issues that you may not even know is a problem so it's always good to reboot at least once or twice a week now on the hardware side you're also also want to check your charger for the iPad. You want to make sure you're using an Apple certified charger and making sure that that charger is working the way that it's supposed to. I guess the easiest way to do that is to try to plug that charger into another device. These support a USB type C. So if you have a USB type C phone, you can plug that charger in and make sure that it's charging that device the way it's supposed to. Also try cleaning out the charging port. Sometimes there's some debris or lint or anything that can kind of get into the charging port to prevent the charger from making a proper connection. Clean that out and then give it another charge and see if that helps your battery issues. You also wanna make sure that your iPad is currently running the most updated version of iPad OS. You do that just by going into your general settings and then going into software update, having the iPad check to make sure that there are no current software updates available. As long as it's saying that there isn't an update available, you're at the most current version, so you should be good to go on that end. So another thing you could do is disable any kind of background app refreshes that may be happening, causing your battery to drain. If you have an application that refreshes a lot, or grabs a lot of information in the background, you may just want to disable that, especially if you don't need it to do so. You don't need the app to have updated information continuously. Some of these apps can grab a lot of data and that app refresh in the background can end up killing your battery a ton. And the way you do that is you just go into your settings and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you kind of get a list of all the applications that you currently have installed in your iPad. And you would just tap one of the applications and you have the background app refresh option there. And you would just basically tick that off and that app will no longer refresh in the background. Now you can kind of go through your apps and see which ones you don't mind not having up-to-date data. And the app will of course refresh the moment you open it. So if you can wait a couple of seconds on any of these applications, you can just shut that off and that will end up saving you a ton of battery on your iPad. So another option that you have a lot of people don't do but it ends up fixing a lot of the issues you may have with your device is just resetting the overall settings of the device itself so if you go into your general and then you scroll to the bottom and you have that reset option if you reset all settings there it'll ask for a password because you're basically resetting the settings of the ipad itself but resetting these settings can get everything back to a factory default standing now bear in mind it doesn't delete anything that you have in the ipad itself it's just removing the settings that you've set up on the iPad and some of those settings may be conflicting and causing your battery to drain. So getting yourself back to a default standing can help with this issue. So just go in, reset the settings, do another double check and see if that fixes your problem. Now, if you do still have a severe battery drain issue after following these steps and you're still not able to fix the problem, then you can go in and actually do a full system reset on your iPad and restore it from a backup, a good known backup that you have in your iCloud account. And it's basically in the same place that you would 
go to reset the settings of the iPad itself, but instead of the settings, you're gonna erase all content and settings. And this will basically just completely erase and wipe the iPad. Now, bear in mind that it is erasing everything. You're gonna go back to as if you purchased the iPad from the store yesterday or today, and you'd have to reset back up your account. That's why it's always good to have a good known backup. That way you're restoring from a backup that's pretty good to go. And then you can see if there's something else that's causing the issue. Again, if none of these fix the problem, then it could be something deeper that's going on with the iPad itself. And you want to reach out to Apple at that point so they can continue to troubleshooting on a hardware level. Okay. So the next issue we're going to take a look at is if you're having some difficulties connecting to your Wi-Fi or having some Wi-Fi drop-offs or just signal issues in general with the iPad, you can follow some of these steps in order to fix those problems. So ironically, first thing you want to do is if you're having a connection failed issue is just turn on the airplane mode on your device. So you can just swipe down from the top to get to your action center. You turn on that airplane mode. What that does is it basically just puts everything off. It turns off all connections, all Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, any kind of connections you have going to your iPad is automatically powered off. Leave it off for a couple of seconds just for the connections to completely die out. And then you can power airplane mode back off and let all the connections reconnect. Once the connections have reconnected, then you can check to make sure those connections are stable again. Try accessing a website, try getting to where you were initially trying to go before and see if the connection is working. If it's not, then we'll move on to the next step. And that next step is just to do some exploratory checking to make sure that your router is working. So check on another device to make sure you're able to access the internet in the area that you're in. If you're not, then it may be the router itself. If you are, then it definitely is your iPad and you may just want to try to reset your iPad. Similar to what we did in the last troubleshooting issue that we had, you're just going to press the volume down button and the power button down together, hold them down until the power off option appears. You slide that off and then the iPad is reset. Leave it off for about maybe five to 10 seconds, power it back on and then see if that fixes your problem. So now if that doesn't work, your next step is going to be to forget the Wi-Fi signal itself. If you go into your Wi-Fi options, you have the forget Wi-Fi option here on top. It'll completely just eliminate that Wi-Fi option from your iPad. Then you will just turn the Wi-Fi off leave it off for a couple of seconds, turn it back on, let it search through the available networks. When you see the network that was giving you the issue reappeared and just initiate a new reconnection with the password and SSID that you need to connect to that particular network and then do a quick test once more to see if you're back up and running. Now, also another thing you wanna do is try to reset your network settings. So if you go into your general settings at the bottom, you have the reset option there. And if you just go down, you have the reset network settings option there. Gonna ask for your password, of course, input the password. What this is going to do is just reset all the network settings that you have saved in your iPad. Any network connection that you have saved is going to get reset, wash completely clean, and then you just initiate a new reconnection to those networks. A lot of times, sometimes you may have a stale password or stale SSID inside the iPad itself. Resetting those network settings helps fix that issue. Now, if none of those options work, then you may have something wrong with the Wi-Fi antenna in your iPad. Try connecting to a different network to see if that works. If it's not working, and you're not able to connect to any Wi-Fi networks and the antenna itself may be damaged. And at this point, you know what to do. You definitely have to reach out to Apple because it's now a hardware issue and they just have to look into it a little bit further and get that fixed for you. So the next issue we're gonna take a look at is any kind of intermittent touching or intermittent unresponsiveness when you're touching on the screen or moving around on the screen itself. If you're noticing that you're having some areas of time where the iPad just isn't responding the way that it's supposed to, you can try to follow these steps to see if that fixes that issue. One of the first things that like to do is just take like a microfiber cloth and just clean off your screen. You'd be surprised or shocked just how often a dirty screen or unresponsiveness can be attributed to the screen itself just not being clean or dust or anything just kind of interfering with the touch mechanisms on the screen itself. Clean off the screen, give it a try, see if that helps. Hopefully it is that simple. If not, we'll move on to the next thing. Try resetting the iPad itself. Again, the volume button down plus the power button until that power off option appears. Slide it, leave it off for a couple seconds, power it back up. Try removing any any cases or any screen protectors you have on the iPad itself, take those off, see if the screen is still unresponsive. If that's the case, check for any updates in the general settings and update to make sure you're at the latest iOS update. Next, you wanna go into your settings, accessibility, touch, 
and touch accommodations and you want to make sure that is turned off. A lot of times this is turned on and that can cause a lot of the issues. A lot of users found that just turning this option off help fixes any kind of intermittent touch or display issues they have with their iPad. You also just want to try disconnecting all Bluetooth devices. The easiest way to do that really is to turn off your Bluetooth and you can just go in here, power this down, and then that basically just removes any Bluetooth devices you have. From there, just experiment with the iPad to see if those intermittent touch issues still remain. If they do, then we can try disabling the tap to wake feature that helps with some issues as well. So if you go into your general settings and we're gonna go back to accessibility and then you're gonna go into touch and then you have your tap to wake feature there. So you can try disabling that tap to wake feature, resetting or rebooting your iPad, powering it back up and see if that fixes the issue. What do you do if your iPad is just running super slow? It's not opening applications the way that it's supposed to. Again, one of the first things ironically you need to do is just try resetting the iPad. You'll see that it is a common theme throughout all the troubleshooting steps. If you're ever experiencing any kind of issues that is off kilter or just weird with your iPad itself, try a reboot first. A lot of times a reboot will help fix a lot of issues you may have but if not then the next thing you want to do is check the storage space so you just kind of want to go in and look at your storage to make sure you're not maxing out in any particular area making sure that you have substantial storage for your ipad to move fluently and do everything that it needs to do app wise and just processing wise storage does play a big component or a key role in how your ipad does function so checking your storage to make sure you have enough is definitely going to be one of those troubleshooting steps you don't want to skip over your next step is just to take account to what applications you currently have open and then start closing apps accordingly and checking the fluidity of the iPad to see if it's increased. As you close applications, the background processes may close out as well. So, and then just close out some of the background app refreshes as well to see if that helps to fix the issue. You can also try resetting your network settings. Again, that's gonna be in general reset and you can try resetting your network settings and your overall settings on the iPad itself to see if that helps as well. And if none of that works, then your next best step is to just erase all the content and settings of the iPad and reset it back to factory settings to see if that helps fix the slowness of the iPad. So one of the last issues we're gonna take a look at is if your Safari on the iPad itself is not working properly, if it's running slow or if tabs are inexplicably closing without your knowledge, then you can go in and check a lot of the settings inside the general settings of Safari itself. So you just scroll down until you find Safari. And when you're in Safari, you have a ton of different options here that you kind of look at. But if you're having any kind of performance issue with tabs, first of all, one of the first things you want to do is scroll down to the tab section here. And you just want to make sure that the close tab option here is set to manual. Sometimes this is set to a different option. And after one day, a week or month, this setting actually makes the tabs close out automatically after a day, after a week, after a month. So if you find that your tabs are inexplicably getting closed out and you want to set it to manual, bear in mind, the more tabs you have open, the more processing your iPad is actually doing. And that can actually affect the speed of the iPad overall. So just kind of keep in mind how many tabs you have open at one time. But this will give you the ability to manually control which tabs are open on your iPad. Now, you do also have the ability to clear any kind of cached information or cached data from Safari itself. Sometimes some stale cached or stale information can cause Safari to crash or to constantly restart or just not to work the way it's supposed to. So try going in, clearing that data to see if it helps, fixes any issues you have. Remember when you clear the data, just do a quick restart on Safari if it's open. My suggestion would be to close it out prior to doing this. But if you do just go through and do it while it's open, then just close Safari and reopen it and then do some testing to see if that fixes the problem. Another thing you wanna check is the request desktop websites option. This is a feature that gives you the full desktop version of websites on your iPad itself. It usually works perfectly from time to time, but if you're having issue with a specific website, you can go in and actually shut this option off, try accessing that website and turn it back on to see if that helps fixes the issue. It's still kind of a new thing that the iPad is doing. So from time to time, I've found that some website, it just kind of weirds out for some weird reason. But turning that option off and then back on does help fix the problem. And then if you go into your advanced settings, you have your website 
website data here and you can actually just go through and clear this out. It'll load all the information on the, on the websites that you're visiting. It'll show you exactly how much information it's storing inside your iPad. And then you can either remove singular websites or just remove all websites altogether. And then also just look at your JavaScript settings. Some websites actually require JavaScript to be enabled in order for you to access it. So if you're finding that you're having an issue with any specific website and your JavaScript is turned off, try enabling that JavaScript option and then trying that website once more to see if that fixes the problem as well. Like I said, guys, I hope this video helped you get started with just troubleshooting any of the offhand issues you may have with your iPad so you can get full functionality out of your device the way that you're definitely supposed to. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and smash that like button. It definitely helps the channel and it helps services the YouTube algorithm. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell for notification if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and check out some of the other videos we have on the channel, both for troubleshooting and just overall fun tech stuff. Thanks guys for checking out the video and until next time, peace.